Hi everyone, welcome back to What the Fintech, your Fintech Fingu show. What the Fintech is a news and information platform covering the latest Fintech development in Hong Kong, Singapore, China, and Asia. Join us every week for an engaging conversation with Asian tech figures to discuss about entrepreneurship, emerging technologies, customer engagement, and partnerships. Before starting this interview, feel free to share your question in the comment sections, like and share. And today we have Sam from Currency. Hey, how, how are you, Sam? Hey, Mehdi, I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very happy to see you. You are yeah. like a, one of the OG of the of the fintech industry here in Hong Kong, so it's great. Oh, to... wow. I've never heard that before. <laughs> now you are. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent. My star has risen. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, so um, before we can start currency during this interview, what I like to do is to speak about you as a speaker. Uh, sure. Can you introduce yourself, what you have done before, where you are from, and what you are doing for currency right now? Absolutely. Um, so my name is Sam Coyne, and I'm from Ireland. I've been in Asia, though, for the last 12 years, uh, 10 of those here in Hong Kong. And I have, I suppose, during that time, been on, uh, obviously, my career journey, but also uh, my journey with the world of startups and, and now with fintech. Um, so today I work at Currency, which is a fintech company that was founded here in Hong Kong. And for the last uh, several years, I've had the privilege of being part of the leadership team at the company. So uh, in true startup fashion, I've worn many hats at different times as needed, which I think is one of the brilliant things about being in the startup world. Uh, today, I'm the chief marketing officer, and I also take care of our front office, sales, account management, client servicing, and many projects related to new product development, market development, and anything else that needs doing. So there is always something. Uh, the company's growing, so it's it's been an exciting journey so far. Um, I remember last time I came to your office was maybe four years ago. And That's right, after yeah. this, I saw like you or your co-founders in many fintech events, like the fintech mm. week or other places. So are you still based here in Hong Kong? How your team have developed since that day? Uh, how many are you right now? Yeah, you know, the team, we are still uh, based here. Hong Kong is our headquarters. It's our home, uh, although we have quite a global footprint uh, these days. Uh, the team has grown a lot as well. We have about 55 people in the Hong Kong office now. We've, we've moved office a couple of times since that first meeting that we had. Um, so we have a, a, a lovely place now in, in Quarry Bay here in Hong Kong now, which is, has been great. And the company has yeah, grown quite a bit in that time. We've, we've uh, I think since we met, we've probably five times the client base that we had. Perfect. Um, a lot more products and services. Uh, actually, we just launched uh, a new product today, which was physical Visa business cards for the Hong Kong market which is something that we've wanted to bring to market here for a long time. So that was great. Finally got that out the door today. I saw it on the website before you came today. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So that just went live. Um, that's been in, in the works for a long time. Um, and you asked, you know, about where I'm based. So we're actually, we're, we're expanding in around the world, but uh, particularly one of the focuses right now and one of the projects that I'm working on is we're opening a new regional main office in Europe um, because we want to grow the business there. We want to go to 24 hours with a lot of our trading activities. Um, and so that's a project that I'm heavily involved with. And actually this summer, I'll be moving over to Europe to run that business okay. uh, within the group. So there's a lot of exciting things happening in the company. Yeah. So you will become the general manager for Europe, for example? Uh, yeah, CEO of Europe. Yeah. Perfect. So Perfect. Congratulations great. for this. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting and it's great to be given these opportunities. Perfect. Perfect. Um, uh, before joining Currency, did you have a kind of turning points? Because like most of the people joining a startup, they often have a turning point or so they, you know, question their life, what they want to do, what they want to achieve. And most of the time, entrepreneurship or joining a company is the answer. Yeah, you know, well, I think everyone has a lot of those kind of inflection points as they go through their life. Um, and I know for me, if you ask my mother, she'll say that she knew when I was five that I was going to end up in business somehow. I take that with a pinch of salt, but definitely when I was 16, because at that point I decided on business school. Um, but I think I think I would identify the the key kind of turning point in my life is after I graduated from business school. I was really looking for I wanted international experience, I wanted exposure, I wanted to essentially throw myself in the deep end to a certain extent. And I'm a real believer that putting yourself in uncomfortable or unfamiliar situations is how you grow. So I was like, how do I how do I start? What's the first step? Um, and I was very fortunate to ultimately get a fellowship, a scholarship to go to Singapore and work for a company there, but also study for a master's degree. Um, and so that was really, I think, a really pivotal moment in my life um, because that, that really sort of set me on my current journey, I suppose. There's been things that led up to that and things after that, but that really, I think, was, was, was an important one that, that put me on the path I'm on. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, another question is um, about the company. 
I, mm. I know pretty well currency because I remember the first DBS accelerator. Yeah. Uh, you were part of it. And I saw the growth of the company uh, from, from day one. But can you introduce what you are doing since day one, how you developed the company, and what kind of uh, problem you're solving right now? Yeah, yeah. And, and you're absolutely right. DBS, our very first bank partner, and, and we were uh, in the accelerator in the early days. So the company, the idea for the company uh, goes back to 2014. Um, so Ricardo, who's the founder, he, he actually, he's Italian, but he grew up in Hong Kong. And then he had um, the bulk of his career in financial services in London um, with uh, JCH Capital Management, Goldman Sachs. He spent a lot of time as, uh, as a trader right, and built a lot of experience as well with technology-driven trading platforms. And so he moved back to Hong Kong in 2013 with this kind of wealth of experience. And the initial idea was for an electronic FX trading platform that was accessible to SMEs. Um, and that was the, the, the very first thing that was built and, and deployed to the market. And actually, the very first client for that was also the company that, to a certain extent, gave Ricardo the clue that this was needed, which was his family had been running a wine business in Hong Kong for a few decades, since the 70s. And so as importers of wine, he knew that they had paid a lot of money over the years in FX, in FX fees. So that was sort of the proof of concept and what was initially built. And then there was, you know, from there, you kind of add to that and you have more ideas. And if you're doing electronic uh, foreign exchange trading, the natural complement to that is then to get into cross-border money transfer. If a business needs FX, they also got to move that money somewhere. Um, and then we just built from there, essentially. So what we have today is, is a global cross-border payments business, money transfer, foreign exchange, and card issuing for, for businesses of all sizes. We have quite a comprehensive um, platform and solution offering these days. If I'm not mistaken, also, you are providing kind of a virtual uh, bank account to companies. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, I remember at the very beginning, a couple of companies like this emerged in Asia. And mm -hmm. today, if I'm not mistaken, you are still independent, uh, like the company is still here, yeah. operating very well. And you mentioned that your customer base grew by five times since last time I saw you. Yeah. Can you maybe explain a bit more what are you doing for this kind of virtual bank account? Yeah, and I believe we were the first in Hong Kong to do that. Uh, there are others today that do it, but I believe, believe we were the first. Um, so the virtual bank accounts are you know, fundamentally a way to receive bank transfers around the world. That's that's essentially what they are. It's It's a named virtual bank account that we can provide our customers um, at any of our bank partners around the world. So we have a very large global network of banks that we're partnered with, and those banks are integrated with our platform. Um, and what we do for, for our clients and all our clients is all our clients are businesses. Um, so it's, it's a corporate solution only. Um, if they have payers in a foreign country, we can very quickly give them a virtual bank account there so they can receive a local payment. And um, this is actually part of everything we do is about making the management and use of, of funds around the world, simple and fast and cost effective. And virtual bank accounts are one of the most important tools in our, in our toolkit for doing that. Especially when you look at um, sometimes how long can take a bank transfer from, for example, a country to here, can take a couple of days. Yeah. Maybe you need to justify as well uh, the reason why you receive the bank account. Mm. So with your, with your virtual bank account, you can do it on the spot directly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll do you know uh, swift transfers, TTs where we need to, but mm -hmm. but you know what we're trying to do with our network is to eliminate that as much as possible, so that we can keep things fast and nimble and agile and not have to fall back on that. As you say, it can take a long time. And going back to um, the beginning of the company and the first version of the POC proof of concept of what you are doing to now, mm -hmm. how was the growth of the company? What was the different steps that you can share with us? were really important as a milestone for the company to be developed? You know, I think one of the things that makes currency um, sets it apart a little bit, I suppose, in, in the world of startups is that the company was grown very, I would say, with great patience and care and very method methodically. Um, we didn't take any external capital till year eight, which is, you know, quite late in the game by a lot of uh, people's measures. But what it meant is that at every step of the way, we've been able to build the way we want to. We've been able to build in response to customer demand and, and really not without having anyone else whispering in our ear, we are independent, as you said. Um, there have been a number of milestones. You know, when it, when it comes to building something like we have today, I think there's really three pillars that a business like ours rests on. Um, one is the technology, 
right? The actual platform itself, our internal core banking system, the ledgers, the payments engine, the foreign exchange engine, and that's all completely in-house built from the ground up. That's, that's something we own. It takes a long time to do. Um, but it means if you do it yourself and you don't use white label solutions or third parties or anything, in the end, you end up with something that is completely fit for purpose, which is what we have. Uh, it takes longer, but it's worthwhile. And the other pillar is obviously you need the licenses and registrations as, as the relevant type of FI around the world to do what we do. And then the third one is, is our bank partners, right? That integrate with us, with our platform, we integrate with them. And, and those three things are really what enable us to do what we do. Um, the, the modern iteration of what currency offers today, which we call the global account, um, which is both a name for our platform um, but also for the product that our customers interact with. That launched in early 2017. So the first kind of four or five years, um, we had an earlier version of the platform and we were learning and we were building. And then the current iteration of the platform launched in 2017. So that was definitely a big milestone because everything we've built since then has been built on that foundation, if you like. Uh, in terms of iteration, do you take some feedbacks from your uh, customers? Do you work with some panels to develop new features or to maybe enhance the UI UX? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're a very service-driven business, um, even down to little things like we have clients, not customers, right? Sorry, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's just, I mean, it, it's important to us. We try to maintain that. You know, it's it's a relationship. We are their partner. Uh, we, we think that's very important that technology is not, um, an excuse not to have good service, right? Like it's not, it's not enough to have a good app, yes. right? Especially in a B2B context. Um, our, our clients entrust us with something very, very critical to them. Mm -hmm. um, and so we very much treat that as a, as a relationship. Yeah. So how did you develop the business, the business model of the company over the past years? How do we develop the business? Yes. Um, it's been through you know, a, a number of ways. In the very early days, we had quite a lot of organic growth, um, which was wonderful because it showed that there was a lot of demand in the market. And when we started doing this in Hong Kong, there wasn't really much else comparable. Um, so a lot of the traction was initially was word of mouth, referrals, people would use the service, they would like it, you know. And then over time, we became a bit more known locally here. We started to have a lot of corporate service providers approach us. Um, you know, Hong Kong, as you'll know, is is a worldwide um it's a very popular incorporation destination, right? Companies set up HQs here, or they set up subsidiaries here. Um, and for that reason, they have a need to manage payment flows coming in and out of the city. So we, we found a, we were a very natural complement to that. And that was um, one of the things that really helped us grow in the early days. But then more strategically, we understood that what we were offering was going to be a very natural fit for the rapidly growing e-commerce industry. Um, and and e-commerce has just been a rocket ship for the last decade and will continue to be. And so a lot of online businesses, majority of online businesses that sell, whether it's on a marketplace like Amazon um, or through their own store on something like Shopify or WooCommerce, they're pretty much all cross-border by nature, right? All, most most e-commerce businesses are selling to customers, if not around the world, at least in multiple markets. And so those businesses by their nature are, are multi-currency, multi-market they have a need for efficient uh, payment collection in markets around the world. They have a need for efficient FX solutions. And so we saw early on that what we were building was going to really um, work wonderfully with that. And so that was something that was always very much on our mind as we develop the product and as we communicate with the market and as our clients is, are we continuing to develop this in a way that's going to help e-commerce businesses? And now today we do have, we have businesses of all kind using the service, but e-commerce remains one of the ones where there's a very, very natural fit for what we do. And that's definitely been part of what has caused us to grow. And, and you know, now today we're an official part of, for instance, the Amazon payment service provider. So, you know, we're one of the, one of the approved payment companies globally that can work with Amazon sellers, for example, that continues to propel our growth. Very good. Very good. Except e-commerce, do you have other industry using your services or like, uh, for example, food and beverage is something like they're using a lot of uh, alternative solution on the market right now? Yeah, uh, F&B, uh, for sure. Not so much on, say, like the hospitality retail side of F&B, but on the import-export side. So a lot of trading companies use our service. Uh, import-export businesses is a very, it's kind of an obvious one. A lot of import-export businesses have huge order volumes, uh, but relatively thin margins. And so, you know, if they can save a few basis points here and there on their FX, if they can get their payments processed more quickly, 
um, that's very, very valuable to them. So definitely we have trading companies. Um, and then we have, you know, we have consulting companies, software companies, digital marketing agencies. There's, you know, once you start kind of getting into it, there's actually, there's pretty much everybody is in the mix. Yeah. Yeah, and it's true that uh, recently I saw like um, influencers across the world are using more solutions like your company is mm. delivering or maybe sometimes the banks because they can sell their product to different markets or import their product. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, during that period where you developed the company over the last eight years, you I'm sure you faced some competitions uh, mm. on like sometimes. Uh, what make your company different from the other companies proposing a kind of similar services or being your competitors for other reasons? I think definitely something that sets us apart is that the business is, I would say, maybe unusually vertically integrated. Okay. Um, which I know really sounds like jargon, but it, it is true in this case. And that, and that comes from the sort of slow growth approach. Uh, we've always had a philosophy that if it's, if it's core to our business, if it's important to what we do, we build it ourselves. Um, and so as a result, all of the core technology, licenses, uh, bank partnerships that I described, that, that's all owned by currency. Um, and so we have enormous control over our platform and our network. We're not reliant on third parties. Um, in our space, in the, in the kind of cross-border global money transfer space, um, there is often a lot of reliance on third parties to execute things. And um, we believe in partnerships, and absolutely. Uh, we rely on them, but when it's core to what we do, we build it ourselves. And I think that's always been something that's that sort of set us apart a bit. Uh, I remember I met your teams and your CTO, and I was impressed mm. about the development of what you are doing in house, uh, yeah. doing everything here in Hong Kong, recruiting your uh, tech talents to develop the solution by yourself. Pretty yeah, impressive. Fod and his team are very talented. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, in terms of of, of uh, uh, teams, are you all based here in Hong Kong, or do you have also offices in other countries, or like? employees mm. in other countries? Uh, majority based here. Majority based here. We do have, I mean, we have offices in um, Australia, UK, Canada, Japan, South Africa, but these are one or two people okay, right, okay. for the most part. Most of our staff are, are here. Um, that is going to change in the coming year with the establishment of the main office in Europe. Um, so that'll be a fully staffed operation, very similar to what we do here in Hong Kong. And that's part of our, our kind of long-term strategy um, the FX trading that we do, for instance, we're doing the trading in-house. So we have our own FX desk. So that's live trading. So we want to go to 24 hours. We're not quite 24 hours right now. So that's something that having people on the ground in Europe will enable us to do. Perfect, perfect. You also spoke about the Visa credit card at the beginning of this uh, yeah, podcast. Yeah. Uh, can you elaborate a bit more on this one? Why did you develop that uh, features? Uh, what kind of problem do you solve with it? Well, that's a that's a perfect example of listening to the to the client base. Right. That was something that was was very much in demand. Um, our, our clients were saying to us, we love your service. You've made it so easy for us to uh, handle all our money transfer services. We would like to be able to do more of our expenses through your platform. Right, The app's super easy to use. It's great. The service is great. But I'll bring more over if you can give me a card. I have advertising fees I need to pay online, like Google Facebook ads. I've got flights to buy, hotels. I'd like, to, I'd like a card that's attached to the, my currency global account. So it, it was, it was 100% client input, client feedback. Um, and we, you know, we approached uh, Visa about that and we were very fortunate to, that they were excited to work with us and we, we were admitted into the Visa FinTech Fast Track program. So they've been enormously supportive of us of bringing that to the market. Um, we were able to bring our virtual Visa cards uh, to the Hong Kong market here um, right at the end of 2021. And, the physical cards have actually just launched uh, today, so they've become available. So that's that's wonderful. That's something that's been in demand as well. As it were, a digital first company. Everything we do is digital. So virtual cards were, were the natural first step for us. Um, but our clients wanted physical cards as well. And so uh, as of today, currency has a, a physical product, which is a, a brand new thing for us. You know, we sort of exist in the real world and not just online now. Yeah, and also like people like to share the cards and say, hey. I have a card from yeah. that company yeah. here. It's, it's just for, oh, yeah, please share it. It's real. Very nice. <laughs> black card. It's just black card. We are, we're all about our black at Currency, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say. I, I saw on the website it was, a, <laughs> it was black. Um, what kind of culture does uh, exist in your company and how you can share the value of your company to everyone? I think 
you know, first and most importantly, uh, we put a lot of effort into creating a friendly and open and supportive work environment. And I mm -hmm. think we've done a very good job of that, if I may say so myself. Um, but also we look for, you know, to build a company, you need uh, not just one or two people who have a vision or a certain attitude, you need an entire company of people who share that. And so we, we really try to look for people who have that kind of building mindset, who are excited by the opportunity to take something and improve upon it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who can, who can see, look at a process or a way that we're doing something and say, you know, that, that could be better. I could improve upon that. And people who don't sit on that thought, we, we want to hear it. And then actually we want to put you to work with a group of people to solve it. Right. And so, um, you know, the, the type of people who enjoy working in that way generally are very good fit for our company. So not only like just giving feedbacks, but also like working on solutions. Yeah. And that's visible. how you learn. Yes. Right? You get your hands dirty. Yes, you know? definitely, definitely. And then you can teach other people. Um, right. You mentioned about the future in, in Europe. You just mentioned about the credit cards right now uh, yeah. that you have. Um, what is the next steps also for the company in terms of development, except to stew if there is others? Uh, yeah, oh, development in terms of the card or in, in terms of the company in, in, in general. general yeah. Yes, um, you know the biggest thing for us right now, um, and it's a really you know a big focus for us the last year. I would say um, is we are now starting to serve uh, what we are deeming enterprise clients, um, and this is really other other FIs, other payment companies, as well as you know larger multinationals who need things like mass payout. Um, services around the world. And that's something that, I mean, going back four, four or five years was part of our strategy. That's That was like the long-term vision was all this infrastructure that we're building for ourselves to service our SME clients um, will become incredibly valuable to other use cases in the future. And that was always part of the plan and part of the strategy. So our platform and our network is, is now at a stage where we are ready to start opening up or have opened up APIs essentially to to other companies to start accessing our platform directly for their own needs. So that's that's probably the number one project going on internally and, and will continue to be for quite some time. Um, so that's something that we, we've just started with the, the first handful of, of these kind of bigger enterprise clients going live on the platform. Perfect, perfect. And API is like the better for everyone. Yeah. Banks are going for it's it. It's the way to go. Every it's how you scale. Is... Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Um, did you see any kind of new trend on the market s since the beginning of COVID or now like all the borders are reopening for the company to use platform like yours, um, maybe here in Asia, or maybe even globally or in Europe? Yeah, you know, there's been a few things. I mean, during COVID, um, the most noticeable one for us right off the get-go was just uh, the e-commerce industry in general just skyrocketed because everyone was staying at home and buying online. Um, and so we had an influx of applications from e-commerce businesses uh, looking for accounts with us. So that was, that was very nice. Um, obviously the beginning of COVID was a very, very tough time for a lot of businesses and, and we were uncertain too. And then it was, it was very nice that, uh, it sort of re resulted in, um, a lot of demand for our service. Uh, so we were very fortunate in that sense and, and well positioned. And then certainly that the trend I think that I'm observing and I expect to continue is, and we sort of touched on it already is, is more and more partnerships within, between, within the FinTech space, between FinTechs, um, particularly we're seeing that among cross-border payment companies and then also between fintechs and banks. And I think this is kind of how we all grow together more quickly and more efficiently. Um, there are a lot of businesses around the world now that have built really cool stuff and it's not necessary for us all to build our own version of it, right? We can leverage things that others have built. So I think that that kind of um, partnership um, mentality is something that I see kind of blooming in the ecosystem. Um, in terms of partnerships, a lot of um, the speakers coming here mm. elaborate a bit more about the partnerships they can have with other companies, for example, but also mm. with big financial institutions. Mm. For you, what are the keys of successful partnerships or with other fintechs or maybe with uh, banks or large institutions? Well, a partnership is a relationship. So like any relationship, it starts with good communication yes. and mutual <laughs> understanding, um, I think is the things that I could point to, right? Are, are your goals aligned? What are your objectives? And then... Um, what, what's your your path like, right? Um, I think as long as you enter into a partnership with everything understood up front, it should be very very successful, right? If you've if you if you know going in both sides exactly what you want out of it and what's what a win win looks like, that's kind of the key, really. Uh, I think entering into a partnership without those things answered is where 
it can get tricky. Yes, and also we see we see a more more and more like collaboration between startups. So it's very interesting mm. to see how like a company like yours can collaborate with other companies uh, extending the reach and also the services that you can deliver. It's an interesting time. Yeah, you know, some of the companies that are now using our, our APIs are frankly our competitors. You know, but that is uh, sort of an exciting development at the same time, and a rising tide lifts all boats. It's the same for banks. Sometimes banks have like a, their competitors using the API or services because yeah. it's cheaper than just having their services or the quality is way better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, as long as it's being used to deliver a better experience to the end customer and everybody is, uh, you know, earning from it, there is no harm. It's all upside. Um, what are the different factors you think it's interesting for a tech company like yours compared to uh, traditional companies delivering the same services? Uh, well, you know, the, the obvious advantage we have, which is that all, let's say, newer companies have, is they are uh, more nimble in terms of their ability to, to, to change and alter and, and develop their products, right? That's, that's not something that we exclusively have as a benefit. Um, I think that that's true of any you know more modern uh, company is there's a lot of value in legacy systems, so they shouldn't be dismissed, mm-hmm. but they do obviously make it harder to iterate at the same time. So um, when you start a fintech, you know you have to understand that that you are initially at a disadvantage because you do not have all of these things to begin with, but you're also free to build whatever you want. Yes, correct. Yeah. Do you think that the big corporate can learn from you and from your? technology or what you bring on the market absolutely absolutely but also it, it, it's it goes two ways right you know if you're if you're a, a fintech company and and you're working with a, a more traditional bank maybe um, then for sure you know I think one of the things that fintechs bring to the table is just the 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 attitude or the belief that just because something hasn't been done before doesn't mean that it's impossible it just hasn't been done yet right? yes that's correct um, but at the same time, you know, banks have a lot of wisdom to share, right? And sometimes the bright idea you have, maybe you aren't the first person to have the idea, and maybe someone has tried it, and they have something they could teach you about their experience. So, you know, it's a two-way street. Did you learn anything like a myth or like, uh, you know, a kind of, uh, uh, how can I say, something that surprised you during uh, your experience with currency in your industry? Something like people think like your industry is this way, but actually it's not like this. Mm, a myth. I don't know about a myth, although, well, or well, anything in the industry would surprise you at that I time. I think what has surprised me the most and continues to surprise me even today is the scale of the industry. It's one thing to know it on paper, you know, like cross border payments is worth X trillions or whatever. But when you actually spend some time in the industry, the sheer number of players of businesses that you encounter and continue to encounter, I'm still discovering constantly fintech companies that I've never heard of, which is amazing to me, you know? Um, and, and the longer that goes on, actually the better I feel about it because there's a sort of a comfort in the colossal scale of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody's in it alone. And, and also the other thing that I think surprises me is just the sheer level of innovation that exists within financial services as a whole. I've worked in other industries and finance is incredible for the constant innovation, the pace of it and and the, the amount of creativity. Yeah, that's been surprising. Pleasantly yeah. surprising. And also like recently, um, you know, regulators and startups are mm. like big banks are going faster for the innovation. Like yeah. blockchain become one of the big worlds. Yeah. AI as well. So you're right on this. Yeah, I mean look blockchain and crypto lit the world on fire. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we are close to the end of this interview. So we'd like to ask you a couple of questions about you. Sure. Um do you have like any books you recommend to anyone listening to this podcast? Uh, probably, you know, so many. <laughs> um, I will, and the answer would change depending on the day or week that you ask me. I'll stick to business ones. Okay. Um, you know, two I can recommend that are very, very easy to read. You know, you, uh, read them, read them, and digest them very quickly, and I think complement each other. If um, you're looking for, I would say, direction in your career or your business venture, is um, start with why by Simon Sinek, mm-hmm. and um, The One Thing by, I want to say, Gary Keller. Um, and those, as the title suggests, it's about finding your why and also the why for your business. And then The One Thing is really about how do you identify the most impactful work that you can be doing as an individual. Um, 
And then a last one that was really beneficial for me because it helped me kind of crystallize a lot of realizations that I'd maybe been thinking about in terms of how I can be productive as an individual in an organization is Deep Work by Cal Newport. Okay, I didn't know um, this one. Yeah, it's just one of my favorite business books that I've read in the last few years, and it's very practical and something that's very actionable. And and I mean, basically, what that book is about is how to um, how to do focused work in a very distracted world. Okay, interesting. Which is something I think we could all use. Okay, I think I will read this one because I, I never... Yeah, I think if you can implement some of his practices into your work life, it, it can really be hugely advantageous. Okay, very interesting. Uh, yeah. Let me take a look at this one. Um, is there is any podcast you're listening related to your field? You know, when it comes to fintech, uh, really just this one. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, you know, actually, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts in the fintech space, but I do get a lot of newsletters I like to read. Mm-hmm. Um, too many newsletters to list, but um, you know, I think for if, if we look at fintech and finance um, and innovation as a whole, I really enjoy the fintech blueprint. Oh yeah, very yeah. good one. Yeah, by Lex Lexicolon. Yeah, 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 his, yeah, his team. That's brilliant. I think for kind of meta analysis of just everything that's going on, it's, it's brilliant. I highly recommend that. Um, I pay for that one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's worth it. And um, for me. More specifically to do with, again, the FX and cross-border space, I get a lot of value from uh, FXC Intel. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, FX Intelligence, essentially. That's that's another very insightful one. Great for staying up on the competition. Okay, I, w- I, w- I will take yeah. a look at this one, uh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. definitely. Um, where people can learn about uh, the company on the website, maybe on the LinkedIn? Yeah, on, on the website, uh, currency.com, that's C-U-R-R-E-N-X-I-E uh, okay. .com, or we're on LinkedIn, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Oh, yeah, um, also on Instagram. But, uh, but we're, yeah, we're on Instagram. Um, but uh, yeah, just head to our website, everything everything is there. And if anyone wants to know about the current like expansion to Europe and join your team, there is any way that they can reach out to you or reach out to the company? Uh, we do have, for instance, a careers page. If, if anyone's interested in, in joining our team, absolutely reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, other than that, you know, we, we have our newsletter that you can subscribe to, and, and you, that's probably the easiest way to stay up to date on what we're up to. Okay, and in terms of profile of new employees, are you looking for tech, for operation, for business development? You know, um, everything really. Okay. <laughs> um, we're we're always on the lookout for talented people. You know, um, particularly in tech, right? You always need good developers. Um, whether it's front end, back end, anything else, you you need good developers in a company like ours. Uh, we've got big operations team, big compliance team. Um, the sales side of things is also growing. Um, so if anyone's listening to this and, and you're, you know, you've got, you've got BD experience in the fintech space, I would definitely be interested in hearing from you. So okay. Definitely. Reach out. I wish yeah. you the world with everyone. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. It was, uh, it was a great interview with you. That's my we pleasure. This year. And, uh, I wish you all the best for your uh, next, uh, journey with the uh, currency in Europe uh, soon and, uh, for this year as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.